go. So we're going to talk about tensoring or wrapping the above knee residual limb, but before we do that I want to talk about uh, a better option that uh, we find and that is for the patient to have a uh, shrinker sock for the uh, limb. This is a tight nylon uh, girdle-like uh, apparatus that is uh, pulled up onto the limb with the inner uh, border pulled right up over the adductor magnus tendon and then the belt is put around the waist to hold it on. The reason this is a good option is that it makes the patient more independent for putting compression on their limb. Uh, they don't need to rely on somebody to wrap the limb, uh, as you'll see, it might be needed with a tensor. Uh, the problem is that these are expensive, 100 to 120 dollars. If the patient uh, patient's leg shrinks down a little bit and they need a tighter one, then it's a big ex expense for them to get a second tensor. But nine times out of ten, this is a better option for independence and actually for providing appropriate compression on the limb and not having to rewrap several times a day in order to maintain that compression. If we do look at the tensoring, um, using a tensor, I use a four inch tensor, quadruple length. Um, you need a long tensor so that you can anchor it around the waist at the end. Some people talk about a six inch tensor. I find that most limbs, unless you have a very big limb, that's too wide for going around the corners without it uh, buckling. So a four inch uh, is plenty. Um, usually you want, obviously the person would like to be independent, uh, but if they're doing it independently, they're usually in a sitting position with a hip inflection. A better position would be having them lie flat uh, in supine with the leg in neutral or they could lie in sideline and you can put the limb in a little bit of extension to do the wrap but the patient is dependent on, on the wrapper to do the wrapping and, and uh, uh, unable to do it themselves. So uh, in lieu of having somebody available to do the wrapping, the patient can do it in sitting on their own and they would do it before they get dressed so they can get the tensor right up into the uh, groin area. Um, the issue with doing the tensoring is that um, the patient has to be able to reach down and feel comfortable about reaching forward. A lot of the patients are elderly. They don't have the flexibility to get down there. So often the, the, the tensoring job isn't great. And uh, that's why the, the shrink becomes a better option. Now, when you're doing the, the tensor on the limb, I don't worry too much about whether I've got more tension here and less here with a gradient going up, as I would with the BK where you've got a longer limb and more dependency with the knee in the flex position. I worry about just getting the whole limb, as much of the limb in under general compression as I can. It's a shorter limb, generally swollen, so you want a uh, good compression everywhere, uh, an equal compression to move the fluid out of there. So when you start the tensor, tensor uh, job, uh, a lot of patients will grab the roll and they'll put it against their limb like that and they'll be trying to unroll the the wrap as they put it against their limb and, and it'll end up sort of coming out of the hand and going across the wall, the, the floor. A better option is instead of doing it that way is flip it over so that you're actually rolling the tensor towards the skin uh, in, the, in the direction that you're, you're running the wrap. So that makes a big difference for them, especially if their dexterity is poor. I don't mind whether you start going across that way or across that way. You don't really want to start going right down the middle like that, forcing fluid to the sides. But you do want to get a, as good an anchor as you can of the, the first few wraps so that it slides as, as little as possible. So I'm going to get you a little bit further out. Good. So I'm going to start this wrap on a diagonal here, just worrying about getting the first couple turns under wrap and anchored. And I don't mind coming up really high up into the groin to start before I start thinking about getting more diagonal and coming across the corners here. So now I can start coming into these corners and making sure that as I come up fairly high on the outside, up in the groin, trying to get as few wrinkles as you can to eventually get all areas of the distal limb covered. diagonals like this to kind of get that happening. Coming up into the groin several times and over the adductor tendon there, high on the outside. 
pushing that in and just looking at trying to get several layers everywhere to get general compression. You can focus a little more on the bottom when you've got it up here. And then once you've got that nicely covered with several layers, you can think about anchoring. And that's when you might decide to finish up with several layers coming around the waist. Patient uh, having to bring that around themselves. And sometimes even coming back down across the limb. And if you've worked it out perfectly, finishing in the front. Okay. And then when you anchor that down, you would just use tape to hold the tensor rather than the clips that come with tensors because you don't want to be uh, potentially uh, pricking the skin and causing a wound. So that's, uh, you know, as good as you can sort of do uh, on your own to try and get that anchored, but you'll find that even doing this, when the person's moving around and the tissues are moving, these layers start to shift on each other and often this will just end up coming off the end of the limb. So these have to be rewrapped much more frequently than a BK wrap um, and the patient has to be taught how to or when to do that.